got a juicy one for you today. Secondhand methamphetamine exposure, okay? Most people think methamphetamines just affect people that are using it directly, okay? And that is not the case, all right? But how did this question come up? Well, it was a real question from a client to a really well-known uh, interventionist. And the question was posed in this way, you know, um, uh, my significant other is a regular methamphetamine users. I have heard that this stuff can be transmitted through saliva, sweat, and semen. Should I be concerned and is this true? Oh, this has opened up doors for some education and a public service message, okay? So let's start off with the client's question and it is true. It can be transmitted through sweat, semen, saliva, but we are talking about trace metabolites. So this transmission is not meaningful in any clinical sense. And in fact, if you were to try and pick it up and measure it through urine, blood, hair follicle, whatever, you know, if you're using the standard test, it's most likely nothing's gonna show up. And if you really wanted to uh, validate the presence of these trace methamphetamine metabolites in your system, you probably spend five to ten thousand dollars for a very precision sensitive uh, chromatography lab to be able to pick it up. So the answer to that client is they do not need to be uh, uh, concerned. Okay, it's metabolites. It's clinically and pharmacologically insignificant in terms of any known impact on your body. What about secondhand smoke of methamphetamines, okay? And this is a really important topic to address. Uh, when meth is smoked, you know, you get the vapors in the air, it's vaporized, okay? And you can inhale these particles. And this becomes significant for those that are regularly in the same closed space with a regular methamphetamine user, cooking it, whatever, okay? If you are in that same closed space without good airflow, uh, uh, over time, okay, uh, and uh, uh, you can absolutely in a contaminated home, that secondhand uh, exposed person can have methamphetamines show up as positive in their hair particles and urine, um, urine samples, okay? But it's even worse than that, okay? It is very, very much more, uh, much more, it's, it's possible where chronic secondhand exposure to methamphetamine uh, uh, particles, air particles, smoking it, whatever, okay? Uh, I, you know, these are, uh, you, you are getting repeated low dosing of methamphetamines, okay? And this can prime the dopamine system that can lead somebody uh, uh, into craving and dependence and possibly addiction if they're already predisposed to that without knowing it, okay? In fact, I'm gonna tell you right now, I do know a person that became addicted to methamphetamines through this route. Let me qualify that by telling you that this patient, this person also had a history that one can potentially argue predisposed them to uh, cravings, dependence and addiction simply because they had a long history 
of attention deficit issues, some substance abuse, and they had not been on their usual medications for um, uh, quite some time, right? So sweat, semen, saliva, particles are transmitted to another person who's in regular contact. They're not even measurable by the standard methods and means and clinically meaningless and insignificant. Smoke with chronic exposure in a closed non-ventilated place can really translate into low dose repeated exposure that can create cravings, dependence, uh, 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 and uh, uh, potentially uh, addiction. Um, this is a very important fact to know, and I'm going to tell you some of the areas that it is uh, um, really, really significant. For me, the most important one is children in homes with chronic meth exposure, okay? That is just tragic because now you're also taking a brain that is struggling to develop. More than likely, the general psychosocial environment is crap. So they're already gonna have developmental issues and deviations where I would call them trauma that will manifest later in life if there's already not physical trauma uh, and otherwise. But now you're exposing them to a very potent substance and really creating major problems, okay? And then there's also workers in labs and uh, uh, cleanup teams and crews. It's something you need to be very cautious of when you go into these meth labs slash homes to do a cleanup. So remember, in some very real senses, addiction is not always a choice, okay? No, sweat or semen or saliva cannot have any significant clinical meaningful impact, although they're in your system, probably not measurable, but secondhand exposure through inhalation route can be measurable. If it's long enough and chronic enough, it can be measurable through urine and hair samples and this chronic low dose exposure can also create cravings and potentially addiction, dependence, whatever, by priming the dopamine system without someone knowing. And as tragic and sad as that is, I think this is something to really consider when a child is exposed to this sort of environment in an enclosed space in a home where there's chronic methamphetamine uh, users, okay? This is something not just custody and family courts should take into consideration, but it's also public health personnel and so forth. So leave your comments below, tell me what you think, like, subscribe, and I'll put out more content for you over time. Peace. Hey guys, if you like the content on this channel, it is about the only place where you're gonna get authentic, genuine thought thrown back at you, and it facilitates your understanding of a complex world, and in particular, and mostly, substance abuse and addiction. Give me a subscribe, like, pass the video on, and I'm trying to reach 100,000. This doesn't cost you anything, but the faster I can grow, the more content I can put out and the more resources I can put out for you, including free eBooks, seminars, uh, education programs and packets. And a lot of this stuff is gonna be free, but at the very least, you will be getting more regular content so it can guide you and navigate you through not only the complex world of substance abuse, but 
the world that really, for some reason, critical thinking and approach to issues that matter to you are non-existent. It's a clarification of thought. So like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Peace.